Hey, good morning, Pete, North Las Vegas. Today's video will be replacing these crush washers on the uh, VG6 Epsilon muzzle devices. And I've had these muzzle devices off and on a few times, and technically you're only supposed to use a crush washer once. So these things have been cranked on uh, at least two or three times. So I've decided to replace the crush washer and uh, before we get to all that, I thought we'd talk about the rifles a little bit. These rifles are identical builds. I got two of them. This one here that we're looking at is a 16 inch barrel. And this one here is an 18 inch barrel. And both of them are using Criterion hybrids, which is somewhere between uh, like a standard contour and a heavy barrel. I'd say it's it's more of a medium medium contour barrel. And uh, Palmetto State Armory lowers with the uh, Franken gun logo, which I kind of like. Um, pretty much the entire upper, other than the barrel itself, is arrow precision. And that includes the uh, bolt carrier group. So anyway, um, I'm not quite sure which direction I'm going to go today. Um, I may go back to using a, uh, a crush washer, and this is a stainless steel one. And then uh, I have a Surefire uh, shim kit, and this is probably the direction you would want to go, especially if you're using a can. And uh, the kit comes with uh, some rock set. And then the other option I decided on was jam nuts. And this one here is made by uh, JP. And this one here is Strike Industries. And you can see by the packaging that they're not real big on uh, packaging. Matter of fact, if uh, <laughs> there's no way for me to know other than looking that skew up from where I bought it, that that's made by Strike Industries, but that's okay. Okay, so before we get started, actually uh, working on the, uh, the muzzle device here, I just wanted to showcase some tools that we'll be needing to get that muzzle device off and on the rifle. Okay, hopefully you know I'm joking. Okay, I repeat, I'm joking. Here's what we'll actually be using. And um, you may have a muzzle device that doesn't have wrench flats. In that case, you may want to use a strap wrench. Um, a lot of the muzzle device manufacturers that don't have uh, wrench flats will give you a tool that, that will fit in the end. Usually there's, there's prongs or some, some way to attach to the front. And um, that way you know how much torque you're putting on it. If you're just going to use the strap wrench alone by itself, that's one of the disadvantages is you won't know how much torque you're, you're putting on the device and the barrel. And now we're going to talk about torque because that's how much torque you put on that muzzle device on the barrel. It's, it's important. Okay, so how much torque you put on your muzzle device onto the barrel, um, it's going to depend a lot on, on a number of things. The, the type of barrel you're using. If you're using a pencil barrel, you're going to want to use less torque. If you're using a carbon fiber barrel, you're going to want to use less torque. Um, but what I'll do here is I'll show you what the uh, United States Marine Corps said back in October of 1984. And that's for the M16A2. And got the, got the page marked back here somewhere. Here it is. Sorry about the camera work. It's one handed. Okay, so if you look at what they say up here on the compensator, they're saying 15 to 20 foot-pounds. Okay, well, on a mil-spec A2, maybe that works. But I'm going to say that even at 15 foot-pounds, that might be a little bit too much. Um, and we'll, we'll get into that here in just a second. Okay, so once again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give a shout out to a guy that runs a channel called AR15 Tech Tips in Under Five Minutes. And he did a very good video showing what happens at different torque values 
uh, between this muzzle device and the barrel. Now, as you tighten this to the barrel, what it wants to do is it wants to pull. And when it pulls, you are affecting the inside diameter of the barrel. And uh, this is very important if you're using a muzzle device that needs to be timed. You're using a crush washer, a peel washer, some type of shim kit. Uh, if you have to time your muzzle device, it's very easy to put too much torque on this. And in his video, I want to say it was starting around 12 foot-pounds, maybe 15 foot-pounds. Um, he demonstrated using an erosion gauge uh, in the barrel as he was a tightening that the dimension inside the barrel changed. And I think when he got up to about 10 foot-pounds, uh, it didn't change a whole lot. I, I want to say it was like two and a half, ten thousandths. The idea of the barrel would start shrinking down because of the tension. But um, another thing was, I, it looked from the video he was using a pencil barrel, so that may also affect how quickly that happens based on the, on the torque value. But he demonstrated all the way from uh, pretty much no torque all the way up to like 50, 60 foot-pounds, which you are never going to put on a barrel on your muzzle device. But he just did that for demonstration purposes. And by the time he was done getting up around 50, 60 foot-pounds, I mean, it was no longer ten thousandths you were looking at thousands, and I think he got up to about close to three thousandths, maybe four thousandths on the ID. I, I, I may be off on the numbers a little bit, but the ID of the barrel change was significant. So my goal is, whether I'm using a crush washer, shim kit, jam nut, whatever I decide on today, I'm gonna try to stay around 10 foot pounds. Uh, definitely try to stay below 15. And if I was, if I end up using a crush washer, then maybe is, I may want to go initially up to 20 and just back it off ever so slightly and then snug it back up to where I'm right around maybe 15 foot pounds. Anyway, that's the goal. Okay, so VG6 Epsilon, three quarter inch wrench on the flats. Okay, so different barrel manufacturers do things a little bit different on how they cut the threads. Um, Criterion tries to cut the threads all the way into the barrel as far as they can go. But sometimes they'll be about maybe a half or a thread to where they can't quite get up against the barrel face. And so that's going to kind of dictate... Um, which style of jam nut you use. And I'll take these out of the packages and we'll discuss that on Criterion, how they cut the threads right up against the barrel face, um, which jam nut you pick is going to matter. Now, some barrel manufacturers will put a relief cut. They'll, they'll cut down below the threads right as you get towards the, the barrel face. And there's some advantages to doing it that way and there's some advantages to doing it this way. So let's take a quick look at the, the two jam nuts that I have, one from JP Enterprises and the other one from uh, Strike Industries. Okay, so besides the uh, Strike Industries only having two flats and the JP Enterprise uh, having multiple flats, um, what starts to end up mattering on this particular barrel cut on the Criterion, like I was saying, because the threads go as close as they can to the barrel face without any relief cut, um, the chamfer on these jam nuts starts to matter because you have to have room for it to, to mate up against the barrel. I mean, if you want to start them out flush, you don't have to, but I like to start the uh, jam nut as, uh, up against the barrel as much as possible. So you can see on the left, on the Strike Industries, you get a little bit of a relief cut in there, a little bit of a taper. And on the JP Enterprises here, it doesn't look like they have anything until you flip it over. Now you can see you have a big generous uh, chamfer. So on the JP Enter Enterprises, um, it can be directional. So I'm gonna spin each one on and I'll show you how they end up on the barrel. Okay, so this is Strike Industries. And you can see because of the way Criterion cut the threads on their barrel, you start off with a little gap here. And not that that really matters. By the time you get the muzzle device on, you're probably going to have a gap anyway using a jam nut. But I would at least like to start out flush if I can. 
So we'll take this uh, Strike Industries off and we'll put the JP on and see if it fits any better because they have a more generous chamfer on one side of the jam nut. Okay, so this is JP Enterprises. And I know I'm repeating myself, but the chamfer is only on one side of the jam nut that I got from them. And the other side is, is more straight cut, more flush. So you can see that the JP Enterprises, because of the more generous chamfer on their jam nut, it goes right up against this Criterion barrel that uses threads all the way to the face of the barrel. Now, if you have one of these barrels that has a, a generous relief cut in there, this, this won't be an issue. But like I said, there's, there's pros and cons to doing it uh, each way, depending on what type of muzzle device you're using, uh, whether you're gonna run a can, whether it's a direct thread can, whether you're gonna have a muzzle device that you spin your can on, and, and all that stuff might matter. So in this case here, if I decide to go with the jam nut, I'm gonna be using the JP Enterprises just because I can start off closer to being flush. Okay, one other thing here I'll mention here real quick, the uh, Strike Industries 11 16 on the flats. On the uh, JP Enterprises, it's three quarter. Okay, so I got the muzzle device timed uh, fairly close. It's, it's not perfect, but it's on there good enough to give me an idea of how much of a gap I'm gonna have behind the, uh, the jam nut. And you can see it's, it's barely hard, it's hardly anything at all. I think it looks pretty good. So because the Strike Industries didn't quite fit flush up against the barrel to start with, uh, the JP Enterprise was a better fit because of the more generous chamfer. Well, I know I'm repeating myself, but the chamfer is only on one side, at least the JPs that I got. And so I think we're not gonna use the, the crush washer and I think we're not gonna use the shim kit. And if I ever go to a can, then maybe that's when this is gonna become uh, an advantage to getting the uh, muzzle device or the can on there straight so, straight so you don't, uh, so you reduce the possibility of a baffle strike on your can. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna go with the JP Enter Enterprises uh, jam nut. I just, I kinda like the way it looks. And um, like I said, it has the least amount of gap starting at the back of the barrel. And the advantage to the jam nut is I get to torque it wherever I want and don't have to worry about the timing. So that's the direction we're going. So I'm going to get this thing snugged on there and then we'll put the rifle back together and take one last look at it. And then I'm going to do my other one. Okay, so at the beginning of the video, I showed you what the Marine Corps says. But I'm going to start off at 10 foot-pounds and see how I like that. And I'm using a crow's foot at an angle, 90 degree angle, so that won't increase the torque value or decrease the torque value. Um, I think I already mentioned that the JP Enterprise uh, jam nut is three quarter. And I'm gonna be using this Midwest Industries uh, rod. And I've talked about this in a couple other videos. I think this is the best one on the market. And they put this uh, guide, guide rod on the top of it. And this fits into the top of the receiver. And this goes into the barrel extension. So this, this locks the receiver and the barrel extension together. And on all my receivers so far, this has been a pretty nice snug fit. So there's not a bunch of slop in it between the receiver and, and the uh, extension on the barrel. And that locks the receiver and the barrel together. So there's less chance of anything really bad happening. But anyway, I'll slide this into the, uh, the receiver just so you can see what it looks like. And then, uh, like I said, I'm gonna do the actual tightening and the timing part off camera, because I gotta go out into the garage and uh, put this rod in my vise. And the garage is kind of a disaster. Okay, so that's what it looks like inside. And uh, this part here will go in the vise. And like I was saying in the clip before, this locks the receiver and the barrel together so nothing moves. Nothing can uh, hopefully get damaged. So let's go out to the garage. We'll get that thing timed and get that jam nut snugged up. And like I said, I'm gonna start out at 10, 10 foot pounds, see how that feels. I may go to 15, but I'm definitely not going above 15 foot pounds. Okay, I wasn't gonna show it because the garage is a disaster. 
didn't want you guys to see what kind of hack I am out in the garage. But anyway, here's my rifle on a rod in the vise. So I'm going to use these two wrenches to get the device timed to where I want it, get it snugged up. And then once I got it where I want it, then we'll come in with the torque wrench and try to get it somewhere between like 10 and 15 foot pounds. So I'll do that part off camera. But here's part of the reason my garage is a disaster. Here's some of my other hobbies and interests. I'm kind of big into dirt bikes. Been working on this thing forever. It's a 71 Camaro. Just about got the wiring done. That's my old 01. There's a story behind that car there. It has something to do with my ex-wife and we'll just leave it at that. All right, let's get this rifle done. Okay, so there's the crush washer, how it looks. And there's the jam nut. So as far as uh, cosmetic or aesthetically, I think the jam nut looks just as good. Maybe in some ways it looks a little better to me. I don't know. But anyway, um, jam nut worked out great. I got it at, sitting at about 10 foot pounds. Um, indexing the, uh, the muzzle device for me was uh, using the jam nut easier than a crush washer. So overall, happy with my decision to move over to a jam nut. And um, I, I tried to strike a difference between where the handguard and the gas block was because they're off a little bit to each other. So I tried to get the muzzle device as close as I could. I know it's hard to tell from the cam camera angle, but if I get this at just the right angle, it's it's on there pretty straight. I know you can't tell from my camera work, but it turned out pretty good. Okay, well, yes, that's about it for today. Anyway, here's a new T-shirt my uh, my wife got me. Thought it was kind of mildly amusing. Cordless hole puncher. All right, Pete, North Las Vegas, over and out.